Hey guys, it's Spaces Sims, and we are back with more of the Virtue Fan Disc. Epic Lycoris, whatever. Figure it out. And we're continuing Mathis's encore ending. And like now we're kind of brought it full circle. So we started off in the very beginning repeating some of the stuff we'd already done. And then we kind of got to like, oh, okay, okay, there's some new stuff happening. Okay. And now we're back in the basement, kind of going back to where we already did stuff in the first game. No, it's not exactly the same, but we're getting all the same backstory and whatever that we got in the first game. So now I'm like questioning, now I'm back to questioning like, is this a valid use of our time? Because at first it was like, I don't know, it's a good refresher for me. But then they kind of veered off and you're like, oh, okay, they are doing something kind of different with it. But now that we're back in the basement, it's like, are you going to then just put it back and kind of do almost the exact same ending, but just slightly different? Because then that's going to be kind of disappointing and it's going to make me feel like we just wasted time. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how they're going to do it. Like, you know what I mean? So we'll see. Hopefully we get the end in this part because if we got to spend an hour or two going through the same motions we went in the first game with Camille explaining everything and then Mathis, you know, fighting against every personality that's dumped into him again, you're like, I don't, I don't really want to redo that. You know what I mean? So like, hopefully they know how to like tighten it up a little and then give us something different. Uh, and we'll see. But anyway. The prestigious Claude family of Arpachel have long kept a secret. All who lived in this country knew the story of the drifter who watched ashore long ago. He brought with him four books, all of which had been lost, save for the one on genetics. The Claude family received one of those books from the drifter in person. The book governed the knowledge of words. From the west to the far east a universal translation tome that made it possible to understand the words of any country. The Claude served the royal family, translating and publishing foreign texts for all to understand. That was the original mission tasked the Claude family. We know. My parents were no exception. They served a now-dead member of the royal family. Well, is she? They wed, not because of love, but because of politics. I, Camille Claude, was born as the only son of two obstinately loyal citizens of the country. Camille, once you become a reliver, I'll tell you the Claude family's other mission. So until then, we'll allow you to do what you wish, but when the time comes, you must bear the torch as the heir of the family. What my parents told me wasn't a bad deal, so I spent my days fooling around with prostitutes day in and day out. <laughs> Typical rich boy, Jesus. And that is, until I met her at the bar, Rosalie. Rosalie lived a life scorned by society, as someone who was born in the slums and became a reliver prostitute. But with her golden hair, she was so beautiful that she won everyone's hearts. I was completely captivated the moment I laid eyes on her. Yes, it was love at first sight. I mean, that's kind of sweet. I'm madly in love with you, my beautiful Rosalie. Please be my wife. <laughs> Proposing to a prostitute you just met. You have bad taste, you know. She always teased me, but... Rosalie wasn't like the others. She never looked down on her background or her profession. She was a woman who loved beautiful flowers, who lived with the sort of grace that silenced any unreasonable word. The more I got to know her, the more I fell in love, and each day I tried to persuade her to marry me. Rosalie would laugh off my proposals, but soon. What if I were the Grim Reaper, or a wicked woman after your fortune? Well, in that case, I'd become a scoundrel worthy of your presence. We'd make a nice couple of jerks together, wouldn't we? Oh, you really do have bad taste. But I like you and your bad taste. In the end, she responded to me favorably. And then the time came for us to marry. It was then that I broke one of my promises to my parents. Turning into a reliver would make people lose the love they felt. So I gave up on extending my life. Even if we died from death's curse, we vowed we'd end our lives together at the age of twenty-three. 
after some time had passed. Rosalie and I were expecting our first child. But aren't your parents still alive? Obviously. Because... And, and, and Rosalie's a reliver, but she's just not going to go back to, like, and do a backup or anything else. Sure. But your parents are still alive, so I can't believe they allowed you to marry a prostitute. Just thinking. You know? Thank you. Thank you so much, Rosalie. You and our future child. I'll make sure we become a happy family. <laughs> but first, we'll have to have a great wedding, right? Okay, so I was like, you proposed and you're going to get married, but I don't think your parents are going to allow this. I was overjoyed. I believed that our happiness would continue until the day we died. And to be honest, it was blind faith. But such happiness would not last long in a land cursed by death. On the day before our small church wedding, Rosalie fell ill. She told me her chest hurt. Rosalie thought it might be something other than morning sickness, so she went to a doctor alone. She went by herself. I'd been busy preparing to succeed the family business and taking care of her. She left without telling me anything. She didn't want to burden me any further. I never knew that would be the last time we would speak. That night, Rosalie and the tiny life growing inside her were killed. <laughs> it's all your fault, Rosalie! You're a filthy whore, no different from me! But you tried to find happiness all by yourself! Alright, I kind of remember this now. Oops, no, sorry. Their killer was a prostitute from the slums who worked with Rosalie before. She was envious of Rosalie for finding happiness with a man from a noble family, so she dragged her into one of the alleys. There she used a dull blade to stab her over and over again. The knife made its way through Rosalie's abdomen to our baby. Rosalie, hey, wake up. My darling bride, we're going to marry tomorrow. Without you, how am I supposed to decide on our baby's name? The death of my love. It was more than enough to plummet me into the depths of despair. And you kind of understand why then he's like, I'm going to kill prostitutes. You kind of get that. And there you have it. I'm the person behind the missing prostitutes. Camille Claude. And that's the truth behind my beloved Rosalie. It was in that tank back there. That giant test tube. Although, at the moment, the title of Deliverer is being carried by Mathis. It was a love story with a tragic ending. And it continues to get even more tragic. There was nothing for us to say. What it was he sought from killing the prostitutes and creating his homunculus after such a tragedy... We had a guess at what that might be. It was likely that the body sleeping in the tank was Rosalie's corpse. Without a backup, she can't become a reliver. But Rosalie's body is still here. Then, if you were to prepare memories that didn't come from a backup... Exactly. Though I'm sure Cyan Brophys noticed what I was up to. Camille continued to speak in detail about the truth behind his lies and his hope of reuniting with his beloved Rosalie. Yeah, because you can't do backups when someone's dead. In order to restore Rosalie perfectly in mind and body, he went to the Institute to find those who would lend him their knowledge. He then received an anonymous letter from someone who offered to help him with his research. And... Hi, what's she doing? that his supporter prepared this laboratory of madness. If I'm not able to bring Rosalie back by proper means, I just need to use methods that are improper. My supporter's involved in the same line of work, so they showed me the basics of creating false memories. After conducting research on my own with the help of stolen memory data from the Institute, I succeeded in recreating Rosalie's memories. Or creating... All that was left was to successfully integrate them into experiments to help them mature, recreating the Rosalie I loved. And the test subject I created for that was... Me. Mathis's change in personalities wasn't because of an illness or some demon. 
but because he was becoming different people based on the memories built into him? All those war memories of Brother and Jean, all of them are false memories from other minds. The person named Mathis Claude never existed in the first place. That's right, as expected of my greatest work. I'm so proud you understood so quickly. Not only your hatred, but even your love for her is a result of your changing personalities. I'm sure the prostitutes and the lives that would have grown to become infants would be so proud of this achievement. Uh. Told of the details of how he was created, Mathis put a hand to his mouth in reaction to his disgust. To be honest, I don't want to have to make you into a scapegoat since you were so valuable. But I couldn't get caught right before my reunion with my beloved Rosalie. So I decided to use you to take the fall for my crimes as the real deliverer. Wasn't it just so fun to cut open those prostitutes, deliverer? Another wave of despair colored Mathis's face. No. Did you fabricate the personality and memories of a killer that didn't even exist and download them into Mathis? Brilliantly said. He will be captured in my place, leaving the name of the Deliverer in criminal history. It was a goal, no, an order that was so self-centered and so absurd. N no, that's just... Even if Mathis were captured by the Royal Guard of the Corps, I c if I could just report to them as expo and expose Camille... Impossible. Do you believe you'll be able to report my crimes to everyone around us whenever you want? Even against, let's say... Mathis's very own testimony admitting guilt? Also, he would just inject Mathis with a murder and make him kill me, and then, you know. He saw what I was up to, and it felt like he had a hold on my heart. I shouldn't listen to any more of what this man might say. That was the warning my brain was giving me. Oh no, that's impossible. I mean... Mathis's persona will be fixed to that of the Deliverer soon enough, and won't be able to return from it. Huh? What did you just say? His smile was so dazzling, but there was an indescribable cruelty deep in his expression as well. I told you, didn't I? You'll be sacrificed in my place. Camille's bright smile warped into something more twisted. Because he's a homunculus, Mathis is, frail and Mathis is frail and needs to have new memories downloaded into him every night for him to stay alive. Homunculus, a human-like creature. One can be created using embryonic cells and downloading memories into their brain. But the memories I'll be downloading to him from this point onward will be those of the Deliverer. You understand what that means, don't you? <laughs> After realizing this horrible turn of events, Mathis held his head in his hands. No, 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 I can't stand it. Please, brother, please stop. The elder brother cruelly continued on, ignoring his younger brother's pleas. Well, he's technically your daddy, but, uh, you know, he created you. The person named Mathis Claude will eventually disappear. What will be left is the murderer who loves tearing women apart. The Deliverer. With his voice full of hope and conviction and being able to reunite with her, I almost felt as if the woman in the tank stirred a little. After that, after realizing we had gone missing, Adolphe and his team rushed to begin their search for us. Camille told us he ran into them while pretending to know nothing about what happened. Camille invited them into the mansion and treated them just as normal and wasn't suspected at all of anything. We couldn't escape, even if we wanted to. My leg could hardly move in the condition it was in. And even if it could... I'll become... the Deliverer. A scumbag with no emotions. No. Who would in fact enjoy hurting Spacey? In order to keep Mathis alive, it was absolutely necessary for Camille to download memories into him, so he couldn't fight back. After laughing at our shocked expressions... Well, look at the bright side. If you're stuck here, you won't be able to kill any more women. <laughs> C 
Camille grabbed Mathis by the neck and slammed him on top of the lab table. Stop it! I tried to stop him, knowing what he was about to do, but with my bloodied leg, I couldn't even stand up. All that's left is for you to kill her as your final victim, and you'll stay quiet. And Alec does the poor witness who saw it all happen. He inserted what looked like a cord into the scar on Mathis's neck and began sending the memories of the Deliverer into him. <laughs> Mathis's body convulsed in pain with each torrent of light that enters it. Please wait! Stop! Please don't kill Mathis! I'll do anything! No, Spacey. I don't want to lose the part of me that loves you. I want... to always... Stay myself and write more stories with you. And then make that wish come true in your next life. <laughs> no! As if to mock Mathis' screams, the last memory rushed into his body. Later, I'll come back to get you after the Deliverer kills you. Spend your last happy moments with the man who used to be Mathis, okay? Camille left the room to wait for Mathis to kill me. Well, here's the thing. This would be really bad because then you're going to act as the witness, but where are you going to have to dump the bodies and there's not going to be any blood? And You know what I mean? Mathis, who was left unconscious, woke up an hour later. Fortunately, it seemed his persona as the Deliverer still hadn't awoken yet. But I was sure the next time he awoke from sleep would really be the end of everything. Mathis woke up, his head still hanging down as if he understood the li that likelihood as well. I really am an idiot. He murmured in a soft voice. I didn't even realize that my brother was never killed. And the result of pushing you away and my revenge for Bora was... This. If I'd only doubted myself or Camille for even a moment, I wouldn't have killed anyone, nor would I have had to hurt you. Mathis... I'm sure that after I kill you, Camille will hand me over to the core and royal guard as the Deliverer. So, before that happens, I have to save you at least. No, if I escape alone, you'll... It's fine. Using this false life made, made of so many sacrifices. I was just a murderer who killed people with a smile. I have no right to be saved or live a decent life anymore. The whole time, Mathis was staring at his trembling hands. I couldn't deny that there were victims. Normally agreeing with him and criticizing him for what he did might save him in some way. But still, I want to leave this place with you, Mathis. Why? You saw what I did with your own eyes, right? Why would you do that for some killer who can't control himself? Why... Would you continue to offer such nice words to me? The throbbing pain from my leg actually helped me stay calm. It made me very aware that the words I was about to speak weren't from a fleeting emotion. Crime and punishment, birth and purpose. All those things were so painful to him. Because what I feel for you, for all of you, is a love I can't even put into words. Dragging my injured leg, I moved toward Mathis and held him with all the strength I had. S Stop. Please. I... I don't have the right to accept this. I'm a murderer. Come tomorrow, I'll be smiling as I kill you. No. I might even kill you right this moment. Even right at this moment. My heart's beating so strangely when I see you. And if... If I... And if left to my emotions, I might leap onto you at any second. Well, that would be preferable to killing me. Mathis was trying to reason to me that I had to get away from him and escape. But the time we spent together... I'd like to spend as much time converse I would like you to spend as much time conversing with me as possible. He spoke of it so fondly.
I got even closer to Mathis and covered a shaking hand with my own. Even still, let me be by your side. After the moment you said you want to be with me, my only place is beside you, Mathis. Slowly, his hand grabbed me back. Are you sure? Yes, I can't stand being away from you. Right as his eyes began to shed tears, they began to close, demanding that he sleep. After his eyelids lowered, then opened again in the morning, he'd be not Mathis Claude, but the Deliverer. So, what does that matter? There was no change to the fact that, Ma that the Mathis I love was still inside of him. Just then... Thank you. After ta taking in a deep breath, Mathis buried his face in my shoulder... He was so focused in trying to remember every detail of the warmth he felt, trying to make sure he would never forget this moment. I'll remember this. I'll remember this warmth even if I don't have any memories. I'll keep it not in my mind, but in my heart. I'll fight so that I won't lose this gentle warmth. He promised me quietly, but more strongly than any promise I'd ever heard before. I brushed against Mathis' cheek as he lay there, ready to sleep at any moment. I'll remember it, too, no matter what you might become or what personality you have. You were the man who told me a beautiful story of love. A man, Mathis Claude, whom I love so much. Thank you. I know I can trust that you will. Among the memories of all the personalities I've had, what I remember most is that regardless of which Mathis I was, I was always happy being with you. You were so warm. And I love you so much. Mathis' eyes grew cloudy. Before they closed completely, I brought my lips to his. It wasn't a kiss meant to signal our separation. Goodbye. No matter what sort of horrible killer I become. I love you, Spacey. What a precious kiss to promise myself to him. Without a clock in the room, there was no way to tell what time it was. Mm hmm. Which is why I didn't know how much time had passed when Mathis woke up. Mathis? I timidly called out the name of the man who was sleeping on my shoulder. And then... The moment he saw me in his eyes, a dazzling smile grew on his face. If it isn't Blondie... Mm-hmm. <laughs> a dazzling smile of a murderer? Come on, you're a good fool of me, game. He held me with all his strength. I wanted to see you so badly. Not a day's gone by that I haven't thought of you. It was just never enough, no matter which woman I killed. I've been imagining how satisfying it would be to kill you. I was frozen in surprise as he held me. Even though I'd hardly had a conversation with Mathis as the Deliverer, I wondered why he was so terrifyingly obsessed with me. Because his love for you inside, it's just in a psycho way now. While I sat there in shock, Mathis pulled out a dagger. But I can't just kill you. You're not like the other... You're not like the other girls! You're not like the other women. I have to savor the moment as I love you. The Deliverer simply smiled. It's all right. I won't kill you right away. You're so precious that I'll cherish every single moment. So that the sensation of killing you remains in my memory forever. I see. If this is proof of Mathis's love, then it's fine. No... So cruel and sad. This man standing in front of me didn't know any other way to express love. I didn't even know how many days passed since then. With a prick, a bead of blood formed atop the small cut on my fingertip. I barely felt any pain, not from a small wound like this. Mathis was watching me, his eyes entranced. Ah, the blood flowing from you is so beautiful. It's like a jewel, 
<laughs> Camille's like, Jesus Christ, would you kill the bitch already? It's been days. He kissed my wound. <laughs> it's strange. It's blood, but it smells sweet like a flower. His lips were stained in black and red as mine were some time ago. This repeated itself over the past few days. In a change of direction, Mathis made little wounds on me bit by bit, enjoying the sensation as he did. I thought he'd kill me right away. Maybe this was a, a silver lining. Or maybe a sign of despair that he wouldn't kill me quickly and painlessly. As I stood and thought, Mathis walked toward the entrance of the laboratory. Where are you going? Out to kill a woman. I have permission from the owner of this mansion to leave. I thought my heart would stop beating. W why? Why aren't I the one you want to kill? I'm just saving that moment for last. But because of that, I feel so unfulfilled and have all this love bursting out of me. I have to get rid of it some other way. Hey, at least he's not getting a salty. He's just like, I gotta go stab another bitch because I can't stab you. I mean... It's wrong and inappropriate, but it could be worse, I guess. As he put his hands on the door... Oh, okay. Forcefully stop him or stop him? Well, I'm going to guess we stop him, but is it stop him or forcefully stop him? I feel like probably just stop him. Forcefully seems a little like going to get us stabbed real fast. Oh, look at that. Okay. Okay. I can barely move because my hand is my hand is compromised by the bird, so Okay, so. Oh no, it's forcefully stop him. Okay, sure. Story of imprisonment. Oh, okay, so this is the end. Okay, alright, alright. So that gives us our end. Wait a minute. Oh, Okay, never mind. I just scrolled up because I wanted to see if it was going to say end, and there's another save file. I don't see... Okay, okay. All right, so there's a choice in here. Jesus. Okay, I'm not going to lie. It's like... If you're going to backtrack that much to kind of set it up or whatever, and add, like I just I feel like these are almost too fucking long. Like, I don't know. I shouldn't complain about it, but especially because it's just, in a way, rehashing a very similar ending to one we already got... As opposed to we're setting up the path and then we're going to veer off differently. We've already kind of done this. Yeah, he had different personalities. And I don't think he was ever the deliverer. But he was always a different personality, a different murderer, whatever. And that's basically... It's the same thing, just done differently. And I don't know. It's like, again, is there a point to it? Like, you know, especially if like now there's another fucking choice coming. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. It's never going to fucking end. And I just feel like it might be too fucking much effort put into rehashing the same shit we already did in the first game. And yeah, you're adding new details, but when you're going to go down the ending and it's basically going to be exactly the same, just like, it's the same thing, just done a little different. It, it doesn't make it different, and I don't know if it made it worth doing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a little like, why am I wasting this much time? When at least if we did some backtracking and you rehashing some stuff and then you veered off completely differently, but you're literally just, it's just an overlay. You know what I mean? You're like, you just, you added a, a slightly different twist to it, but it's the same fucking thing. So like, is there a point? Is there a point? And I'm not feeling that there is one now, especially because we're on like, what is it like the fifth fucking hour? And it's like five fucking hours. So you're spending like, over a third of the game on rehashing shit we already did? I mean, on one hand, it's like you're paying $60 for a fucking game. Actually, I think it was only like 50 But still, you're paying a full price for a game, whatever it might be, to only get, like, 35, 40 hours. Or you're paying the full price of a game and you get 60 Sure, monetarily, and time it's spent, it seems like that would be better, but when you're thinking that a third of the game is spent redoing basically stuff that you kind of already did. It's just jazzed up a little bit differently. You know, it's the same shit. You just put a fucking feather in it. Doesn't make it the same, sh not the same shit. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I, I'm, 
I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent here with this. Like I was really like, okay, we're going to get our ending. And now I just feel like it's going to be another fucking hour and we're going to be going through the same shit over. I don't like, mm, not the additional content I wanted, you know, (sighs) but I also, I know we could have started with the interlude stuff, but I didn't want to end on a sour, sad note. And I again would rather get these out of the way because it's the same fucking shit. Same shit, different day, you know? I forced myself to stand up, dragging my foot behind me and leapt onto Mathis' back. I really hope they wrap this up fast. I simply let my emotions take over after that. Blondie, what's wrong? Just... I knew I was about to say something absurd. I was prepared for what would happen once I did. I was frightened and trembling, but still... If you're gonna love someone, then love only me! I couldn't stand it if your bloodlust is taken by another woman. Suppressing my fear and pain, I told him of my insane, selfish demand. Then, after standing in silence for a moment, I'm so happy. I can't believe you'd say that. Joy spread across his face in an instant. (laughs) A dull pain ran down my arm. I then realized that his dagger was stabbed into my shoulder. Ugh, your face twisted in pain's really the best thing ever. Scream more. Cry more. Twist that pretty face more and more. Let me love you. (laughs) Over and over. Deliberately avoiding any spots that'd be fatal, he continued thrusting the knife into me. Definitely a metaphor. You just bit really hard, that's not nice, jerk. It was about 30 minutes later when he let go of me. Mathis gave a satisfied smile, then went over to a nearby cabinet and brought back an armful of bandages. To my confusion, he began dressing the wounds that he himself made. And again, I don't quite remember, I don't think he was ever the deliverer, but he was murderers, whatever, and a lot of this, him stabbing us and then patching us up and everything, is very fucking similar. So again, it's like, we did this. We were trapped in the basement. He basically did all this. So, like, make it different enough to make it worthwhile, you know? For a while, it was getting different, and it was like, okay, okay, okay. All right. And now you're back to basically being the same fucking thing again. And I just... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Mm. We'll see. But at the moment, I keep waning with this. It's like, eh, I don't know if I'm feeling the fact that, like... We're doing the same thing, and then like, well, you know, it's not... Okay, we're going a little bit different, but also it's a good refresher, and well, now we're going to do the ending basically the same way, and now I'm back to, like, not feeling it? I don't know. I don't really think that that's the best thing for a fan disc or a game at all, when you're like, I'm feeling it, I'm not feeling it. I am, but I'm not. When you're... It shouldn't wax and wane like this, you know what I mean? Especially in the very beginning of a game. I don't know. Could just be me. I don't know. Wait, did I read that? I don't know. Uh, to my confusion, he began dressing the wounds that he himself made. What? I asked him in weak, panting breaths what he was doing. I'm sorry. I really can't kill you right away. But, as you wish, I won't cheat on you. I'll hurt you little by little. And in the end, I'll kill you in the most excruciating way. I promise. Thanks. Mathis wrapped the bandages around me with gentle hands as if to support his promise to me. This is fine. Mathis's twisted love was focused on me. Mathis said in the past that he killed other women in order not to kill me. Being with him kept him from taking the lives of other women. But we could no longer involve other people in our stubborn love. Above all, if his bloodlust was his love, just as I said, I intended to take those feelings from the one I loved all for myself. I know I'm insane, but I didn't regret this decision. Whatever twisted shape our love took until my final moments, I decided to love him. This feels like it should be wrapping it up, you know what I mean? Like, and again, it's slightly different with, like, because it wasn't just... Because the real Mathis would kind of come through, even after he started hurting us. The real Mathis would eventually come through and, like, pop out, and then Jean would keep doing it, whatever. So this is slightly different, but this feels very, like, end-coded right now. But they're gonna keep going, and it's like, oh, fucking A. It's when they do stuff like that. We're like, I decided 11, blah, blah, blah. And then you're like, and then, and then you're like, why do you do this? 
After that, my life with Mathis continued as he carved me up little by little. And we don't need excruciating details of this constantly. You know what I mean? Like, my adorable, adorable golden-haired girl. You're so cute when you're covered in blood. The way it feels when I cut into you is absolutely the best compared to all the other women. That's great to hear. Lying on the ground facing downward, I tried desperately to push my body up with my arms. I was actually surprised I hadn't died yet. I am too. Kind of wish you would. <laughs> I hate to say that, but like, my clothes were soaked with the smell of blood. Breathing alone caused my injuries to sting with pain. Are you done for today? Yeah, you'll die if I do any more. Mathis brought out the bandages from the cabinet as usual, but... They weren't enough. I suppose that makes sense since we've been using them every day. I'll bring some from upstairs. You wait here. And don't force yourself to move. The sound of his voice as he left the room was one filled with care and kindness if you didn't know the context behind it. And in his place... Hey, you've got it pretty rough with him taking a liking to you in such an odd way. Camille... Camille appeared with an expression that was a bit taken aback, approaching me as I lay there drenched in blood. Have you come to finish me off? Of course not. If I did that, the Deliverer would torture and kill me himself. Well, it is true that I want you to die soon. Camille and I are on the same page. Like, if she's gonna die, like, let's wrap it up. That's all I'm saying. I need him to be captured or I can't begin the process to revive Rosalie in peace. Or are you trying to buy time, hoping to keep that from happening? I'm not sure. That may have been the case at first, even if just a little bit. But now... It's taking everything I have to receive Mathis' love. I knew it was insane to talk about this to the person who had caused it all. My entire body ached with such pain that it was making me go crazy. Love, huh? <laughs> I must say, I downloaded some crazy personalities into Mathis. But you're pretty crazy yourself, accepting him for what he is. It seems the insane were made for each other, no? That... Okay, 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 so this we save. So good, this is our last choice. And what I really hope, it's, it's the last choice and there's only like a short bit, not another 30 minutes to 40 minutes or whatever. Because like, it's just getting to the point where like, okay, we get it. We've done something similar. It is different, but it's one of those like, because it's too similar, it's like, I feel like if this were in the original game, you would have been skipping through, okay, making a couple different choices, and then you would have gotten here and you'd done your end, and it might have taken, like, 10, 20 minutes to read Matt instead of, like, five fucking hours. You know? I just feel like it's too, like, part of me likes the fact that they added, like, okay, different things and things were going different, but when they started veering off and, like, okay, he's the deliverer and he's going to be, okay, wait, 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 wait. We're going to go totally off the rails with it, totally a different direction, and then we brought it right back around to doing a very similar thing to what we did the first time that it kind of deflates you a little. And you're like, oh, it's kind of similar to the other ending. And like, it's just another version of it, really. So, so I'm still questioning if it's worth my time. I don't know. And then I'm like, well, now we've been here for so long that it's like, can we wrap it up then if we're going to do the same thing? I don't know. Hmm. Not sure. I'm still not sure how I feel. I'm feeling at the moment, I'm like, eh, eh about it at the moment, but. I know we've had some good times during it, or at least, you know, but I'm back to the eh feeling. I don't know. I know, I keep bitching. Anyway, so are you. Well, you're just the same as me, aren't you? Huh? If you were in my place, and Rosalie turned into another person because of someone else's malicious actions, I'm sure you'd continue loving her. I hated Camille so much that I couldn't stand it. But I had to accept crazed love for the love that it was. I could no longer deny it. Yeah, of course I would. I'd love Rosalie no matter who she becomes, and I've promised to marry her. But she's different from Mathis. He'll have any blonde woman as a substitute for the woman and the memories he received from me. I see. So that's why he was so fixated on me. A fondness born from implanted memories. 
I felt a bit saddened by that fact, but I felt... I felt a bit saddened by the fact. A bit. That's the first typo we've seen, though, so bravo for that, at least. Tim and Ronald are doing a good job. Anyway, I felt a bit saddened by the fact, but... That's not true. To love death, who brings so much sadness to others. I'm sure Mathis is the only one capable of that in the entire world. His straightforward love, his awkward love, his violent love. They're all irreplaceable treasures that he gives me. The greatest love, just like yours. Now she's like monologuing. Even though they were supposedly not even related by blood, I could see the eyes of the man I loved in him. Camille could have easily ignored my remarks, which were practically ramblings at this point. To him, I was just a witness who had to be erased. But... But? Okay. I thought I clicked, and it clearly didn't work, but... <laughs> Though yours doesn't compare against the love between me and Rosaline, I suppose whatever persona he takes on, and that persistence you both have in your love for each other... Well, I suppose it's worth some recognition. He didn't ridicule me for what I said. Even though he was mocking me so much when he revealed his identity to me. Oh, I didn't know you were here. You didn't do anything to my precious darling, did you? If you lay even a single finger on her, I'll kill you. You don't need to worry. There's only one woman I'd ever think of wanting to touch. In any case, hurry up your playtime with her. I'm not letting you use the place just to play with dolls, got it? Your precious Lady Spacey's about at her limit. It wouldn't be odd for her to die any day now. I know that. After slipping past Camille, Mathis began dressing my wounds. And after looking at my face... Spacey. For the first time, Mathis, as he was now, called me by my name. Give me some more time. In just two more days. In two days. I can give you the most loving death I can. That was effectively a declaration that he would kill me. Two days later, I'd be killed by the person who loved me. Cruelly, brutally, with no trace of my former shape. Even so, I still believed that his desire to kill women would end with me. I wasn't being conceited. I was sure of it. That's why I don't feel any guilt. If I couldn't fight against him, I could only accept it. I understand. Then... I'm looking forward to your greatest expression of love. Right. Yeah. I promise you. I'm sure you'll be satisfied with it, too. But I'll be sad knowing I won't be able to hear your screams anymore. Me, too. I'm sad I won't be able to see your smile anymore. Camille's like, I'm gonna kill both these fuckers. For the next two days... Mathis didn't harm me and instead began preparations to kill me. They just keep dragging this out. Like, I mean, I get it. But at the same time, it's like, can we, are you going to like, then all of a sudden someone's going to, and then you're going to drag this scene out for like another 30 minutes. Like, okay, just wrap it the fuck up. I don't know why I'm so annoyed with it. It's like, I just feel like it's too long and it's too, you're like, it just, especially because that little moment was again, very much like a, okay, this is a very end. And then you're like, and then two days later, and you're like, oh, for fuck's sake, why do they keep doing this in games? They do all these floaty, flowery fucking words that are very end-coded, and you're like, okay. So then we're going to have, like, two days later, you kill me, and then you're going to have a wrap-up, and then, no, but goes to two days later, and then you have another 30-minute scene, and then you have the flowery fucking end scene words, and then it's another scene, and it's like, oh, for God's sakes. It's almost too much. It's It's... And I shouldn't complain about them, like, fluffing it out, but I'm complaining about them fluffing it out. Like, I don't know. Mathis didn't harm me and instead began preparations to kill me. He sharpened his knives and prepared the equipment for storing my body. And to be sure no one would bother him when it came down to it, he shared updates with Camille about the Corps' activities. As time went on, even though I knew the moment of my death was approaching, why, we don't know that! It could be another two hours! For some reason, I didn't feel afraid. And, like, overall, what they did here isn't bad. I just feel like it's not a valid use. It's not a really great use of five hours of our fucking time. Like, I don't know. But the night before, 
It's finally tomorrow, huh? I was called into the guest room by Camille. With a minimum amount of restraints on me, of course. What does he want? My vision was blinded for a moment by the flash of a camera. However, he didn't use the opportunity to do anything further. Oh, what a nice face. I didn't know you still had the strength to make a face like that. Camille smiled, enjoying himself as he held the camera he took from the Institute. Seemed he called me here to take photographs. Why are you taking pictures? Well, just to have his memories. After I asked my question, he gestured for me to sit down. While still staying alert, I followed where he motioned and sat on the chair across from him. Like, okay, again, is this necessary? As he fiddled with his camera, he began to speak again. No matter which persona he has, Mathis has continued to feel a powerful love toward you. The successes of my experiments prove my theories true, and I'm certain now I can reunite with Rosalie. In other words, I'm indebted to the two of you. And that's why at the very least I wanted to repay this favor to you before you die. What was he talking about? And there's no changing that death awaits you in the near future. But I'll allow you to leave a memento to Mathis after you die. A photograph that preserves a remnant of his memories with you. And that way he won't go too crazy during the time before he's captured. I was about to gasp at Camille's unexpected suggestion. What are you... If I had to define it, I'd say this is a gesture of pity from the victor. I thought I'd share some of the happiness that Rosalie and I will have in the near future. I didn't shout at Camille for mocking me, because there was something in his voice that sounded sad. With Rosalie's return and near certainty at this point, I knew there was only one reason Camille looked this way. You... You didn't actually want to have to give up Mathis as the deliverer, did you? If you use him to get caught in your place... You know the price you'll pay for getting Rosalie back is never seeing him again. Of course I do. A short silence fell between us. However, he made up his mind about everything only a few seconds later. In order to love Rosalie and be loved by her, I'll sacrifice anything. And I'll never regret any of it. Madness left the look in his eyes, replaced by what I saw as strong conviction. I see... He was fully prepared for what he would lose before their long-awaited reunion, and was still willing to go down this path of madness. It wasn't something to be admired, nor could I forgive him for forcing the burden of this sacrifice onto Mathis. I'm sure that my final moment will be spent cursing Camille. However... Later, then. I'll be sure to give this photo to Mathis after you've died. I still couldn't change anything, but perhaps this change in his thinking was the slightest sl silver... Was the slightest silver lining in it all? Okay, sorry. I was... Don't have any silver linings, because that means you're going to drag it out more. The sun went down, and then came the night. However, the beautiful moon stayed hidden. It was covered completely by the clouds and the darkness. Strangely, all of the conditions were fil uh, fulfilled for the deliverer to be called forth. Dragging my foot behind me, I returned to the basement, where I couldn't even see the sky. In the room, Mathis was sitting on the floor. He was looking up at the collection of body parts he stole from the women. Gross. It was strange. It's gotta smell so disgusting down there. When I saw him that night, he was so excited of the idea of killing women, and now... Mathis was extremely quiet. I stayed silent and sat beside him. It's a nice night out tonight. A fitting farewell. We can hope. As the one about to be killed, I can't agree with you. I see. Mathis nodded as if satisfied by my answer. He then pushed me gently down onto the floor. I've been making preparations to kill you these past few days. I thought of what order I'd cut you up. I calculated the time I would take. I sharpened all my knives perfectly. So, I can say without a doubt that I can give you the most exquisitely loving death possible. But, something strange. There are these conflicting emotions in my head right now. A part of me that wants to kill you and a part of me that doesn't. To me, to kill is to love. 
Even now I can barely contain the urge to kill you. But when I think about my time after I've killed you, it's a little scary. Mathis continued to mumble, pulling out a knife and looking at himself reflected in its blade. I think this is the first time that someone accepted their own pain as proof of my love. Well, I know. I'm sure you and I were connected by fate in another way before we'd even met. That's why you accept my bloodlust. You told me you wanted it all to yourself. And that's why... The knife he swung down went entirely through my hand. I'll respond to your feelings and kill you. If I have to go mad either way, killing you or not, I want to go mad feeling your blood and the last of your warmth. I was really wondering where they were going to go with it. I'm like, are they going to like have him not kill her really at the end? Because like... <laughs> the knife stabbed into me, dug itself deeper into my hand. The only reason I knew was because the hand that was scratching at the floor in order to endure the pain eventually lost all sensation. Does it hurt? Are you in pain? This is fucked up. Well, like, I mean, okay. Of course, it hurts. But more than that, I'm sad. I hoped... I could reply to your love in a different way, and you would do the same. I wanted to say thank you to that wonderful confession written in the novel. I see, but I'm satisfied with ending things like this. I am too. So, like, can we? I mean, just like I said, I can make you mine from your fingertips to the last drops of your blood. Your crazed desire to have me all to yourself is the greatest love you can give me. The shoulder on which his teardrop landed was struck with a knife as well. After that, it was essentially just torture. Lots of blood splatters. And noise sounds. Wow. Little by little, my body was cut by his knives. Ah, you really are so pretty drenched in blood. I wouldn't regret it if this was the last thing I ever saw. Once one of his knives started to dull, he tossed it aside and took out a new one, and continued to gaze at my blood with joy, sometimes kissing it. I couldn't even scream anymore. Every time a knife gouged my body, I only had the strength to groan. The only color in this room came from my blood. It was almost amusing. I was sure I was more a pile of flesh than a human at this point. I'm going to die. That was the first moment my mind started to become hazy from the blood loss. I could tell my breathing was getting weaker and weaker. All right, this is the last one. If you say you love me, then scream with that beautiful voice of yours, Spacey. Matt this swung up high, the knife that was intended to end my life. Right. Flashbacks to all of CGs from the first game. I never looked forward to accepting your love. I'm scared. This does say unlocks a CG, but I think it might mean that CG that it might mean the whole path unlocks one, and that's that one with us under the covers, which would make sense. I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. Not of dying, but of leaving Mathis by himself of not being able to write more of that story together. I wanted to be with you more, Mathis. I don't want to die and leave you. I stopped being strong. My true feelings came out. A tear fell from me and mixed in with my blood. The moment he saw it drop, Mathis stopped. It was as if someone else was forcibly stopping him from swinging down the knife. Why? I'm... I'm... The Deliverer. The murderer who loves killing women. No. Who has to kill them? Why can't I hear so many voices stopping me? Why? I'm able to kill the person I love right now, but my tears won't stop. Sobbing, Mathis screamed so loud, I thought he would start coughing up blood. 
My head hurts. All the voices inside my head are screaming. That no matter who I am, I want to be by your side. I was the one dying, but he seemed to be in so much more pain. They really had to fucking drag it out even more. I mean, I get it. It's supposed to be a nice touching moment, but again, they've dragged it out so fucking long that it's like, I can't even be satisfied with it right now. Oh, I see. All the Mathises I've loved, including you, you're all there right now, aren't you? While he was frozen, I struggled to get up, now drenched in blood. The Mathises, they're screaming out to him. Then I have to do my part, too. I reached out my left hand. I couldn't really move it because of the knife stuck in it. In that case, I should use my right hand. I picked up a knife from the floor and grabbed hold of it tightly. Speezy. Then looked Mathis straight in the eye and he gazed back at me in pain. Does it hurt? He nodded. Either way, if I kill you or not, I'll be separated from you forever. I don't want that. I finally, finally was able to see you again as Mathis. I want to be by your side longer. After hearing that, I was ready for anything. Mathis, no matter what you choose, I'm going to die. It's a mystery that I'm still breathing. Yeah, it is. As if to show proof, my body convulsed from the blood loss. My vision grew darker, and now I could only see the person right in front of me. But before my vision went completely black, while I could still hear his voice, if you're scared of being apart, then in our final, final moments, let's be together. Huh? I brushed my hand against his hand that held the knife. I'm afraid of dying, of being separated. But if we die together, I won't be afraid. Okay, this is a little twist in NC Common, but sure. I had this swallowed, understanding what I meant. But it's better than him stabbing us and going to jail and then, like, being at, like, you know what I mean? Okay. Then he looked at me, drenched in blood. I couldn't be saved. Faced with that reality, he looked over and over at... He looked over and over at me and the knife and began to cry more. But let's not take 20 minutes to wrap up this murder-suicide, okay? Why would you say that? I promised that you were the one person I wouldn't kill. No. What you need to do isn't kill me. But take me somewhere we won't be bothered by anyone. Mathis held my body with all his strength. You're so cold. You were so warm when I touched you before. I made you this cold. Yes, but... Your body was never that warm either, right, Mathis? So, we're the same now. In response to my playful chiding, a result of my fading consciousness, You're such a fool. I felt like Mathis was willing to respond to everything I had to ask. He let go of my body and readied a knife. Are you ready? Yes. Before I die, hurry. Gathering all the strength I had left to grip the knife. Oh, nope. We do get a CG, and it's a stabby, like, we stab him, murder-suicide CG. Okay. All right, it's tragic and painful. It's kind of pretty, though, I'm not going to lie. We both thrust our knives into each other's chests. I mean, it's a double murder. The warmth of blood burst from our hearts. The oh, this time. No matter which Mathis I was, you were there by my side. That's why it wasn't lonely. Mathis continued to speak beautiful words. Thank you for not leaving me alone until the very end. Thank you for loving every version of me. That's what I wanted to say. No matter how horrible I was as death, thank you for loving me. The sleepiness and pain overcame us, and the light faded from our eyes. Feeling our end approaching, we hurried to speak our last words. You're hurrying to speak your- No, no offense. Like, the ending- It's actually not bad. Like, okay, I'll give them that. But they are dragging it out so fucking much! 
You just stabbed each other in the hearts and you're having a 20 minute fucking monologues. Like, tighten it up, motherfuckers. Like, what should be a touching moment, you're just like, are we still, we're still in our last moment. Are, really? Because we're going to have 10 more minutes of them saying their last words to each other. You had it? Tie it up. If we were born into new lives and are able to meet again, let's write a novel, another novel together, okay? I'm so glad I could hear your voice at my final moments. Me, me too. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's... Oh, look at that little kiss. We get a kiss. It's a bloody painful one, but... I mustered my strength to give him a kiss that only just grazed him. Spacey, the person so precious to me that my or original gave his love to. No matter who you are in your next life, if it's with you, I'm sure I'll be able to fall in love with you many times over. I love you. Mathis quietly took his last breath. While blanketed by the cold from his body, me, too. I didn't say goodbye. I'm right here. No matter what happens, even if we're reborn, I'll be by your... A joyful smile spread across my face as I slipped into eternal slumber. I hate to say I've never been happier for two people to die. <laughs> Our story ended here. Did it? Because it seems like you're going to keep fucking going, game. Listen. Overall, okay. The ending was good. It's not that. The overall story and the changes that they made and the ending are tragic, but good. Okay? But you padded it out a little too fucking much. And God knows that's something that irritates me when you're like, oh, blah, 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 blah. And you're like, okay, it seems like an end. And then we go on for another... 10 minutes and then you're like oh okay this is the and then we go on then we said our last moment our last words 20 minutes later we're still saying our last words and it's like okay i'm gonna need you to wrap it the fuck up i need you to say what you need to say without a 20 minute fucking monologue and i know i should not be complaining about that because that's exactly what i do but i know how that it's fucking annoying right so i'm just saying <laughs> monkey see monkey does not do okay but like our story ended here i don't know about that the maiden of death and misfortune, and the young man who was a homunculus. We were both defeated in their despair. Were both defeated in their despair, but they won love as they died. The man who saw their end muttered to himself, oh, "Well, it's a beautiful enough. It's beautiful enough to end their lives, I suppose." You better not fucking do. Do not do an after thing. Do not do a fuck. Oh Jesus, motherfucking Christ! I'm just saying! I'm just saying! Although, to be fair, seeing what happened to Jean, I'm okay with that. As long as it's not ten fucking minutes. You know what I mean? Like, just wrap it up a little bit, you know? Have your passings, then. Even now, with a deliverer who killed only women, now gone from this world. Even now, with the deliverer who killed only women, now gone. Even now, 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 now. The strange death still cropped up across our Pichelle. Right, because Boro ain't dead. Camille. Oh, we brought Rosalie back! Okay, I'm not gonna lie! Like, I'm not... Okay, alright, 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 alright. You know what? I'm not, I'm not mad about this. This is interesting. Camille! Uh, oh, sorry, Rosalie. I was just so focused on my camera maintenance. Really? You're the one that said we should take it easy at home, remember? The Rosalie that returned looked at my face as she puffed out her cheeks in a pout. Sorry, sorry, but... That pouting face of yours is the most beautiful in the world, Rosalie. I want to take so many pictures of it. Yes, yes, I'm always the prettiest and cutest to you. So what's wrong? Hmm? Don't give me that. You may not have noticed, but you've been spacing out even more recently. Oh. I was just thinking about the past a bit. <laughs> you mean when we first met? Well, I'll put on some tea then and we can take our time and talk about our memories together. After seeing the smile that made me continue to fall for her, I watched as Rosalie headed to the kitchen to prepare some tea. How did you explain this at all to anyone? You're like, you stay in the house and if people call me Jean when I'm out, don't say anything. I'm sure I'm living life as I normally did, 
But I guess there is something off about me. He misses us. How sweet, though. Once talk about the incident with the Deliverer died down, I granted my wish and revived the Rosalie that loved me. And the memory of me crying, holding her when she woke up, was fresh in my mind. And that said, it seemed not everything would be the way it used to. I had a hard time fabricating reasons why my parents were no longer around, or why I normally dressed as a butler now. But as of now, she was living her life, not finding anything too odd. He should just, like, I mean, mm. Now all I have to do is to just live peacefully here at home, not coming into contact with anyone else. Okay, I was like, how do you? It's one of those, like, he goes out dressed as Jean, like, whatever. You know what I mean? Don't ever call, like. You should just say I had to go undercover because everybody thinks Camille's dead. You know, whatever. It, you know, just, I don't know, make something up. You should have figured this out. You should have been planning this. You created a deliverer backstory for Mathis, but you couldn't figure out how the fuck you were going to explain shit to your girlfriend when you brought her back. You've had a while to figure this out. Also, when she wakes up and then she's like, what do you mean it's been five years? You should have told her, like, you were unconscious the whole time. Like, you know what I mean? Unfortunately, it seemed there was a... Oh. Fortunately, it seemed there was a rumor going around that I had become a shell of my former self from the shock of losing Mathis. I had destroyed all the evidence. I was sure I wouldn't be suspected by the core. Although Cyan Brophies might uncover my crimes. He was a busy man. By the time the truth was clear, I would have long since died and gotten away. I looked over a few photographs that were in my hand. There, a picture showed a couple that looked somewhat similar to us. Why did I keep this? It wasn't as though I felt regret or sadness. Yeah, it is. It is. It's adorable. Bringing Rosalie back was the best outcome possible from their sacrifice. Still, why did I keep this photograph? I guess there's no point thinking about it. All I need to do is think about making Rosalie happy. I opened a window. A strong breeze blew through right at that moment. And with it, I tore up the photo and tossed it into the air. The proof of their existence, of their love, disappeared into the clear sky. It could be said that the current Rosalie wasn't perfect. A time may come when I see differences between her and the Rosalie from the past. But even then, if they could do it, so can I. No matter what Rosalie I saw, I would stay with her. I've won, Maiden of Death and the Homunculus. Hate me and curse me as much as you want. I hope you two find each other in your next lives. Second to Rosalie's and my love. I think your love is pretty undeniable. That's actually kind of sweet. I know it's tragic for me and Mathis. But, like, they kind of tied it back together into a sweet bow. In a very fucked up kind of way. Listen! Actually... I do think they dragged that motherfucking shit out way too goddamn long. Okay? We were, like, five hours in and it's like... I knew this was going to happen, though, like, with what I knew. I'm like, I'm going to get to the end. Is special the CGs? Oh, yeah. Um. Okay. Okay, so there's not a lot, to be fair, for each person. Oh, and you can't? Okay, they all have roughly the same amount. That's what... No, Hello. That's what I was wondering about. Because, you know, there's some love interest where they're like, oh, this guy got... Oh, Cyan gets 12. But to be fair, it's just a different version. You know what I mean? They have different versions, but they still only have nine. They basically have nine. Oh, Anko gets 10. Mm, all right. You know what? I can't be mad about that. Another. Okay. And there's going to be... Oh, these are probably from the side stories and stuff like that. You probably get little ones or whatever, but... Um, oh, you, oh, you bastards, I love you. You know what I hate? You saw, did you notice what I was doing? Like, when you hit the A, it toggles the difference, but it doesn't act like the back button. There's nothing I hate more than that. Listen, 
I'll show you in every motherfucking game. Oh, right. This has like a little... Oh, shit. Okay, hold on a second. Oh, those are voice touches. Okay. Uh, I read that, I think, in a Tome Kittens thing where something about a touch system. And I'm like, a what? On the photos? Because they did this on one other game. But that's to touch them and hear voice lines. Um... And it said the left button to move, wait, the viewpoint. But I was trying, I'm trying to move it and it's not. Oh, this one has them too, but they don't. But I can't actually. Huh. That just moves that, but this move viewpoint. I'm moving my left joystick. It does nothing. Whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, well, anyway, that's for voice... Oh, god damn it, I keep hitting the wrong button. That's for, like, little voice clips or whatever, which would be nice. But it's weird that doing it with the... It says the left toggle, but it doesn't do anything. Move viewpoint. That's what I'm assuming. I mean, I guess it's supposed to just be zoom in and out. I guess that's all it was. But I was thinking that the touch... Thing. Hmm. How would you do those then if you don't actually have a touchpad? I'm gonna have to. I can't un. I can't do my. I can't actually physically touch my switch. It's in the dock. I can't stick my finger in there and touch the screen. You won't see it. So we can't do those. So there you go. Hopefully they're just like little voice lines. That's what it seems to be. Um. Whoops. That's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to go to the next one. Like, oh, we're going back to the other one. The other one's an acuter CG to end on. This one's sad as shit, but yeah. So hopefully, you know, it's just little voice lines and whatnot and we don't miss anything really. Like, it could be different than voice lines from within the scene itself. I don't know. You guys will have to let me know what exactly are they. Are they like exactly like, oh, it's the same lines from within the game itself or is it different or whatever but it's not something we'll do even when we do our voice acting because i can't access them because they don't have a way to access i mean unless there's a thing in options i'll have to check but if you know what to toggle on and off in options let me know because i'll forget to check and then by the time you see this not <laughs> man that maybe i'll remember but you know what i mean because like i can't like even clicking any button i can't do anything hmm. well whatever Anyway, that's kind of a cute thing, but it does suck when you have your Switch docked. It's not helpful that they don't think about things like that. Like, yeah, I mean, obviously you bought the game for the Switch. You're playing it on a Switch. But I like, even if I was playing it downstairs, unless I'm playing my Switch downstairs, watching something in the background, I'll hook it up. I have another dock downstairs that I will hook it up to and play it so I can watch it on my giant TV. Like, it's just nicer. It's a huge screen, but... Anyway, overall, I don't know how I feel about these. I think getting a different kind of ending from the main game, not a bad concept, okay? I do feel like the thought process was like, well, let's just pad out the runtime so it feels like a full game, so you feel like you're getting your money's worth. Is it a really great use of our time? Nah. I, I'm still on the fence about that. I'm not sure. I don't think I would have minded it if... Because, again, I, playing this right now, remember nothing from the first game. So it's kind of a refresher. There's scenes that I'm like, I feel like this is familiar. This could be similar. I don't know. You know, it's helpful for me. If I were playing this directly after the first game, I'd be like, I'm reading the same fucking shit. And I remember all this shit. And holy goddamn hell. I think it would have annoyed me definitely more. I do think they dragged it out a little too fucking long. I think that I know what they were trying to do. Like, oh, we're going to give you a little more added details. But I think they just did. I don't want to say too much because they gave you a, a quite a bit in the very beginning of rehashing the exact same scenes where instead they could have kind of summarized those a little bit. To like, okay, we want you to get the gist of where the fuck you were in case it's been a while since you played the first game. So we'll kind of summarize so you know where you're jumping in, give you a good starting point to make you feel, instead of like throwing you right the fuck in with Mathis being the deliverer and being like, what? 
you know, start you off, ease you in, but tighten that up a little bit, condense it, not have everything word for word and be like, we're just going to copy the same scenes. And now look, it's five hours or even four hours. I'm sure for normal people, it's probably only three to four hours, you know, um, but like tighten it up a little bit more and maybe like kind of get to the point a little faster. I don't think it would have bothered me so much, but we get toward the end and I'm like, again, I wasn't, I'm like, I don't know. I feel like we start in the beginning and I'm like, eh, okay, I'm not sure. Fine for me. It's like a refresher, whatever. Then we get to the territory where, okay, this feels all like different. I don't think we did any of this. I think this is getting different. Okay. Then they bring it back around to now we're locked in the basement and it feels like you're going to go and basically do the exact same ending that you got the first time. And you're like, and now you lost me again. They definitely veered off. They did not do the same thing. But I think they lose you at that because you're like, am I doing the same fucking shit? And then they kind of stretch it out a little bit too much where and they do what a lot of games do. And it's one thing that drives me crazy. Like we're having this touching moment and we're having these things and all of these lines are perfect to end the scene with. And you think it's the end of the game. Two days later, and then we have all these lines and we're doing all of this and it feels like this is the end of the game or we're going to have one final a week later. And then you're like, oh, Jesus. But like, this is a little bit better than the games where it's literally 20 minutes of lines like that back to back. And you're like, is the game slash scene slash anything ever going to end? Because every line feels like the final line, like every single person on the development team or anyone that they ever met and their families and cousins and like anyone that they know on Twitter and Facebook. Also, they were like, write an end line for a thing. And then they just put all 7,000 of them together. And you're like, we've been here for an hour reading all these perfect ending lines. And it just is a little bit... Radiant Tail did that? Radiant Tail? Listen, I love Radiant Tail, but I'm pretty sure they were guilty of that. And it's like, okay, come on. I love you, but Jesus, what the fuck? But this one did it in the way that most games do with like the, then we end a scene. And you're like, oh, okay. So we'll get like a little afterward kind of thing and then you're like nope and then we're right back in and it's and the next day and then you're doing a normal scene and then you have that bit and it's like uh, wrap it up so it, it gets on my nerves because i'm like i feel like oh okay we're ending now and then no we're not and it's not like i'm at a point where i'm like oh no i don't want it to end i'm like oh okay this is, all right cool we're we're good we're good to end this <laughs> and they don't much like all of you are probably saying about me right now like listen i get it I get it. I ramble as much as these games. But like, okay. I can call it out for what it is. I'm aware. It's annoying. Okay. But, but overall, the ending itself, I it, I like that it was at least different. I thought it was at least, I mean, as tragic as it is, it's tragic in a beautiful way. And you're like, oh, we stabbed each other. How sweet is that? And he turned back into real Mathis at the end and like okay okay all right I like that better than deliverer kills us because that's where I thought they were going and like I think it was a little more satisfying than if they had done that plus the little after story where Jean got his happy ending even at the price of us dying I was like you know what I'm not I'm not hating this <laughs> I don't know I said earlier I kind of wanted that do I is it wrong of me to want to see him get his happy ending and like I know we had a tragic ending, but he had a happy ending, and I'm not mad about it. Like, I don't know. I'm glad they kind of did that. You know? Because, like, it's a happy ending. It's just not the one you really wanted, because you want your main character and her love interest to get the happy ending. And instead, the murdery side character got his happy ending. So you feel conflicted, but I think that's brilliant. And I don't know. So personally, yeah, I mean, okay, I did like the ending. But I do think they could have condensed it a little bit more. So I don't know. So unfortunately, the problem is that's the way it's going to be for all of them. We'll see um, how the rest of them go. It could also just be because Mathis isn't like my number one favorite. So like maybe I just kind of start off like, eh, okay, you know, I liked his character, but like I like him as a side character in other people's routes. So maybe that's my problem. And we'll see what happens. But anyway, there are bad endings for this. Well, that's interesting. Save file two. And then there's another end. And then there's a couple of bad ends. So this one has four other end. Wait. Holy shit. Wait a minute. 
That's one, two. This has four, that is a, this has four other endings. Because I was gonna say the bad endings will probably go fast, but because there's an alternate ending for this, that's probably just as tragic. To be fair, that's not a bad ending. Maybe we'll just do all those in the next part. Because I was trying to think, do we start the because the virtue, the emotion, despair, and salute salute has options and then has bad endings. Okay. I was like, do we do that and then do all the bad endings for both route kind of things? But I think we should just do the endings for um, each sort of grouping. So like Encore and then do the bad endings. Then we go into Emotion and do all the different routes there and then the bad endings. As opposed to do Encore, do Emotion, then do the bad endings for both. You know what I'm saying? So we will do the alternate ending for this. Um, and then also the bad endings in the next part. So I will see you guys. I want it to go gray next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.